During this pandemic, I've been watching a lot of YouTube. And recently, YouTube brought me through one of its rabbit holes in which it started to show me a lot of sailing channels and sailing videos. And I thought that that would be really cool to do. The thing is, sailboats are really expensive. And I could not afford one. Not in the medium term, not even in the long term. So I thought that maybe I could do one myself. And that's what I decided to do. I'll make my own little sailboat in which I could go and learn how to sail and practice sailing and maybe sail around my own country. I also decided to share this over YouTube so maybe it can help you guys if you're going to try to do something like this and learn from my mistakes and repeat what I did right. So first with the design. I made a very very simple design of a catamaran. A small catamaran is going to be eight foot long and about four foot between the center of each hole. The holes have a very simple shape. They are flat bottom and also flat sided. That is to make the building process easier. So I went for a very easy shape. It's more or less like a sarcophagus. I'm gonna show you the dimensions. Two feet from the point, there, the hole is going to be at the maximum 18 inches wide. And at the very back part, six inches wide and I just drew some straight lines be between those points I'm describing. I want the budget to be very clear so that you guys can have a very good reference as to which how much money you will need to spend to repeat something like this. So I went to the hardware store and I bought wood glue, I bought a hand saw, and I bought 200 wood screws. They were one and a half inch long, I also bought 12 pieces of 3x1 and one piece of 4x2. Also, I bought three sheets of 5mm plywood and I took everything home where I was going to start the project. To actually start the building process, the first part I'm going to make and cut out of the sheet of 5mm plywood is the flat bottom of the hole, of one of the holes that is. First, I started taking measurements of the sheet of plywood and making some marks at the appropriate spots so that I could draw the shape of the hole. I drew a small flange all around because I had to actually cut the plywood by hand with my skill saw. So knowing that it's not going to be precise, I cut the whole shape a little bit wider than it should have been, so that I had room to actually make a miss or two. I started to cut the chines to the appropriate size and shape, and then I glued them up and put on the first screws. To make it as watertight as possible, I pulled back the screws a little bit and then with a tiny drop of glue, screwed them again so that maybe the glue will act as a gasket. For the rest of the screws, I put a little blob of glue hoping that it has the same effect to keep the bottom of the hole watertight. I proceeded to cut the other chines and then glued them up. Note that now I'm using a few wood clamps to hold it in place to make the process easier. I use the same screwing method with the glue, putting a little blob of it and then screw it right through it. Now to make the first two bulkheads, I measured the size of the, lar of the lower piece of wood needed, then I cut the wood and test the fit of the first two bulkheads of the lower part, that is. To help alleviate the sheer stress on the bulkhead, I started to cut some pieces of scrap half-inch plywood that I had laying around into a triangular shape with a cut for the chine, cut which in hindsight might not be necessary. Then I glued and screwed this piece into the vertical and horizontal piece on the, of the bulkhead with the help of a square to make sure everything is perpendicular. I continued this process with the second bulkhead until the finish of the day. The next day I started making the third and fourth bulkhead, so I measured the length of the lower pieces that I needed. From the old bulkheads I made, you can see this reinforcement piece. I made it in the form of a triangle. The reason they are here is to reinforce the structure but it was a very inefficient one. 
Why? Because the actual cross section that is helping to reinforce the bucket is just about one and three quarters of an inch. Even though this piece is about four and three quarters by four and three quarters, I thought that for the next ones, I'm actually gonna make a two inch by eight inch, half inch plywood to make just a strip to reinforce this. Then I proceeded to measure, mark the plywood and draw a straight line between these marks to have a reference to make a better cut. And after this, I made the cut and the other cuts to make the reinforcements. I realized that the straight cut I made for these pieces was actually not a great idea, so I had to cut an angle at the ends of them so that they will fit in such a tight space. Soon enough, I realized that the method I used to make sure the horizontal and vertical pieces of the pockets had a 90 degree angle between them was only going to work for the first two pieces. So I had to make up a way to ensure that the 90 degree angle to the single vertical piece. First, I tried measuring it, but it didn't really work as I wanted. So I tried to use some triangular pieces of wood that were laying around, and although it was okay, it didn't really work great. I continued to build the fourth and last bulkhead. This time, to make sure that the bulkhead was square, I used a piece of plywood with two clamps to hold the second vertical piece to the first, and this actually worked great. Then, I continued to cut the transom, but as this cut is really important, I had to set up a track to ensure that the cut was straight, and although I should use this method more often, it takes a lot of time to set up. I had a problem installing the transom because I cut the chines carelessly and they actually were of different lengths so I had to cut a piece from one of them and then I had to use some shims to make up for this difference. This process actually took a lot of time so for the next haul I would definitely, definitely be more careful. And finally, I installed it. To finish the rear bulkhead, I had to grind the corners which were left out. The corners that were hanging from the sides were actually too big to reduce them by this brute force method. So I decided to use this other, more brute force method. And then grind whatever was left. So if you liked the video and want to see the next episodes, please hit the like button and subscribe, I'd appreciate it.